Are you looking for someplace special to take that next weekend getaway in your RV? Let me introduce you to a spot. It's about two and a half hours from Seattle, right at the mouth of Grays Harbor. Greenland Beach State Park, with pull through and back in lots that'll accept up to 60 foot truck and trailer combinations, this place has something for just about everyone. The park is open year round and has 55 full hookup and 38 partial hookup sites for trailers. Check-in time is at 2.30, so when you arrive you have plenty of time to get your rig set up, have dinner, and then take any one of the five trails and hike out to the beach on the Pacific Ocean. You'll catch up with old friends and probably make some new ones on your hike out to the almost 8,000 feet of ocean beaches. And if it's a rainy, windy, cloudy, ugly night, don't worry, because the sunsets are still beautiful. So what is there to do when you're camping at Greyland State Park? There's plenty. If you're not the one that's frying up the bacon, take a walk, check out the campground. That way, when you come back, the hash browns are done, the bacon's ready for you, and you get a good breakfast to start the day. There's plenty of activities to do on the beaches. Some of the favorites are flying your drone or just flying a kite. Or flying your drone taking pictures of people flying kites. Just don't park too close to the surf and let the tide come in and swallow up your car. The beaches though are pretty hard packed sand and they're easily drivable if you pay attention to what you're doing. Just eight miles north of the campground is the town of Westport. Whether you're walking the beach looking for sea glass, agates, or sand dollars, there's plenty of room to spread out, enjoy the waves, do a little surf perch fishing, and spend the day. Framing the entrance to Grays Harbor is the city of Ocean Shores with its 10,000 foot jetty to the north, and to the south, the city of Westport with its 7,000 foot jetty. It was originally constructed as 17,000 feet, but in 1993, the eastern end collapsed, leaving the current 7,000 feet extending out to the west. If you're interested in fishing, the jetty lies in Marine Area 2 and offers great fishing for lingcod, black rockfish, green ling, and the like. Look for kelp patches and use jig heads and plastic lures on the north side of the jetty where the water is a little calmer. The best fishing will be at slack tide or with low tidal exchange and you need to bring lots of extra tackle as getting hung up in the rocks is very, very common. If you decide to hike out the jetty, bring a lunch, bring lots of fishing gear, and just be careful. There's lots of ankle breakers out there, and the second half of the jetty is much harder to navigate due to the size of the boulders than the first half. The south side of the jetty gets some pretty consistent surf conditions, 
which makes it one of the most popular places in Washington, Oregon, and British Columbia to surf. The main street in Westport is West Haven Drive, where you'll find charter offices, all the shops, and Bennett's Fish Shack. The one place a lot of people overlook is the Junk Queen's Tackle Box. You'll find cinnamon rolls, freeze-dried Skittles, if you can believe that, and some of the best homemade pies you've ever had. Try the Burgundy. It's a very active commercial port, so whether you choose to take a charter, go out and catch your own fish, or buy it off of any one of the boats coming back in straight off the pier, you can't go wrong in the city of Westport. Whether it's a day trip, or you come out and you camp, it's a great place to visit.